I'm Max Sterling. Welcome to LARPgasm. So today, we're going to discuss some simple traps using small items like a marble and a bell. So how we're going to set this trap is very simple. Let's say you're an unsuspecting rogue. You just so happen to find a chest. You've taken careful care not to jostle it, just in case it's trapped. You've removed the lock from the box. You're fairly certain there's nothing trapping this mechanism. You take a peek inside. Everything looks good. So you open up the box to get your spoils. And trapped. You were fooled. Now this trap is very simple. All it is is an eye hook in the top of the box. Now I drilled a small pilot hole with a cordless drill. However, these do just screw in by hand so you can make these on the fly. Just be careful not to go through the outside of the box because then a rogue's going to know there's something fishy going on there. Uh, and then from there, it's just simply a balancing act of putting a marble or a bell or I mean you could probably use something else. Rounded objects are usually much better because they will roll and you just want to get it seated onto that eye hook. And once it's seated, you just close the box, lock it, and hand it to your player and watch them try to open it. Now, if they are an experienced rogue, then once they open this box, they're going to take a look inside and they're going to notice that there is a fall trap right there, a marble or a bell or something to that effect. So, two ways to handle this. You can just stick your hand in, apply pressure and hold it in place. And then that way when you close the box, maybe you can still leave the trap intact for the uh, storyteller or GM or marshal to find. That would be amusing. Or you're just going to take the marble into your hand and completely disarm it. So the trick is all you're going to do is just reach in, find where it is. And then, like I said, you can either apply pressure to it where it's in your hand. Or you can allow it to simply fall into your hand and then collect your treasure. Very simple trap, simple to set, simple to make, simple to do. It's very obvious to the player and the marshal or storyteller if it works. The bell makes a little bit more noise, so if you're going to be doing this uh, in the dark, I would suggest using the bell. However, when the marble falls, you know, it makes a pretty loud noise as well. So, whichever you prefer. If you want more than one of these, you can put as many eye hooks in here as you care to. Just make sure there's room for it to fall out. And that's pretty much it. So that's one type of simple trap that you can use on a treasure chest in your game. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to some more advanced type of traps. But I want to get some of the basics out of the way. And that is about as basic as you get but it's a very good trap, very simple to create, very simple to disarm, and lots of fun for your players. So the next type of trap we're gonna discuss is a chain of bells. So what we're dealing with here is we have a fish line with a bunch of bells tied to it connected down in one corner with a thumbtack or screw or whatever you want to use and I have an eye hook up here so I can pull the string through. Now the idea behind this is you can close it and you don't have to play with the length of the string but as you close it you can pull it nice and tight and then you can either just have the pressure from the box hold that in place or you can tie it around here and then tighten it as you're closing. But the idea is that when you reach, or is that when you open it, you'll see the bells, but you won't be able to reach inside to get the treasure because there's a string of bells there that you'll surely jingle. And if you try to just get the treasure out, 
the bells are going to jingle too. So you're going to have to actually figure out how to cut that line and disarm it. Let me go ahead and set the trap and then I'll show you how to disarm it. And for those of you who not sure how that knot should look, it's just a regular knot. And as you close the box, you're going to just pull that along slowly and then tighten it up. So that way, whenever the box is open, those bells are in there nice and tight. Whenever you get that pulled tight, you're going to want to make sure that you cut this excess string off so that the rogue can't see it. So those are in there nice and tight. Your knot's tight. Come along with a razor blade and just snip that off. This way, when the rogue goes to open the box, I mean, if they're crazy and they just open it, they're going to set it off. But when they come in to disarm it, it's still going to be nice and tight. Obviously, you're going to have to pull it a little bit more than, than I did to keep it tight as it closes. Now, if you're afraid that's not going to work, you could bring the string back around the back of the box somehow, keep it nice and concealed all the way around. If your box has you know, other places to hide the string, you can, but the idea is when you open that, there's enough room to work in there, but it's nice and tight. So you can see those bells in there. So to disarm this, depending on your LARP. So the LARPs I go to, most of them, if the bells make a noise, the trap is sprung. So sprung, sprung, sprung. So you're gonna need to open this real gentle. And you're gonna need to come in here with either a pair of pliers or a pair of scissors or hemostats or something. But you're gonna to need to keep pressure on that line while you disarm this. So that becomes a complicated part. Now, depending on your game, you may be able to use magnets. You may be able to circumvent this in some other way. Um, since they're bells and they have to make noise, perhaps a mute spell, perhaps a silence spell, because there wouldn't be any noise, it wouldn't make the trap go off. However, if not, you're going to need to disarm this creatively. Let me show you how I would do it. Now, ideally in your road kit, you're off some things that look a little bit better than tweezers and a box cutter that's bright yellow. But you can make this stuff look more period. If you're in a post-apocalyptic type LARP, it probably doesn't matter, you could totally have these things, but if you're medieval fantasy, you're probably going to want to make these things look more period or get other tools. I mean, there's some things like hemostats and stuff that, you know, wouldn't have really existed in a medieval setting. However, also a lot of these traps wouldn't have existed either, so it's a bit of a give and a take. Depends on how involved your LARP is with their trapping. If their traps are very elaborate, do yourself a favor, get the tools that you need to do it. So for something like this, first off I'd want to get this eye level. Now I'm going to be doing this on a downward angle which is not ideal, but I'd want to have this on eye level so I'm looking directly into it so I can see precisely what I'm doing. But what I would do is open this very cautiously without making a noise. get your tweezers in here or if you have something that locks that would be way better so you don't have to hold it with your fingers let the box close and rest on your tweezers so right now that box is resting on my tweezers get a long blade come in here cut above where you're holding it not below if you cut below the bells are going to drop
Now, I'm going to try to show you this without making a sound, but I'm holding the line of bells now with the tweezers. So now all I'm going to do is just gently lay them to rest in the bottom. And that's it. So, cut the line, keep tension on there, hold your breath. Once they're in the bottom, I would reach in and probably just try to pick the treasure around. If you can't, then reach in, get these bells one at a time without making a sound, and just rip them SOBs right out of that box and be done with it. Now hopefully you don't have a GM who's a complete douche and once it's disarmed you should be able to make noise with it but that's it. So that's another simple type of trap that you can do. This one much more difficult to disarm, requires some tools, a lot of patience. This would definitely have your rogue sweating. If it's something that's a noise maker, you know, give them a little bit of leeway. Um, if something rolls or just make sort of a small metallic sound, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, we're not trying to enter the Foot Clan here, okay? We're just trying to disarm the simple trap. Now, if you hear anything that sounds like a bell rattle, you know, or a jingle, that's it, they're done. But you should be able to listen and make that determination. So basically what I'm saying to you GMs and storytellers and stuff is, don't be a douchebag. Max Sterling here. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, please consider clicking on part two. You wouldn't walk out in the middle of a movie, would you? Then don't miss the exciting conclusion to this video series. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. And as always, adventure on. So I happen across this mine here, and uh, I'm going to go in and check it out. I'm going to see how to maybe properly explore a mine, and how maybe not to properly explore a mine. I'm all by myself. I'm going to go exploring here. So first thing to come up on is this door. <clears throat> no lock, lucky me. Great. What was that noise? Hmm. No. We found the high chest in the woods was a little bit too difficult because <clears throat> people would forget them and then five years later find them. <clears throat> Nothing like giving away your position. <laughs> Don't do that in dungeon ever. So, anyways, that's the end of this little mine adventure.